Hey, it's David Alder, and today on Texas Eats, we have a very special Zoom edition for the show today where we're going to be Zooming in with celebrities and chefs from all across the country and in a different country. Uh, over there in Canada, we have actor Nicholas Gonzalez. He's going to be popping into his kitchen, showing us how to cook up some lamb chops. Absolutely delicious stuff. So join us here today. It's going to be a little bit different, but a whole lot of fun. Get ready for delicious recipes and culinary insight from chefs and celebrities. So my secret is I do flake some good old Malden sea salt flakes on top of the chocolate chip cookies. Plus, figure out your dinner plans with a list of restaurants that are offering curbside and delivery. And we're challenging you at home to use ingredients in your kitchen that you normally don't use. A pinch of sage. This is Texas Eats Zoom Edition. our first guest on multiple hit TV shows and as the co-host of Entertainment Tonight. She's interviewed a lot of fascinating people in her life and now we get to interview her. Now joining us is ET co-host Michelle Turner. Thank you so much for joining us today. David, I like this. I like to eat your man after my heart. I love to cook. This is going to be good. Quarantine lockdown has everybody thinking of new ways to reinvent mm -hmm. items in their pantry, um, making it fun and of course supporting local restaurants for takeout. But if you're going to reinvent something in the kitchen, you have a really fun recipe that you're going to share with us today. I do. What is it? Well, it's a sweet treat because the kiddos are at home, you know, you're having to do homeschooling and everything. So if I'm going to be the lunch lady, I'm going to give a sweet treat at the end of lunch, right? Okay. I make the most decadent, most delicious chocolate chip cookies that nice. you'll ever have in your life. So my secret is I do flake some good old Malden sea salt flakes on top of the chocolate chip cookies when they're baking. And that gives you this sweet, salty bite that, oh my God, not only are they just amazing cookies overall, the base that you make can be used. They're the, it's the best cookie bake you, base. You can put anything in it. I do it with toffee chips. I throw some, you know, macadamias in there. My mom likes them when I just bake them and use the bacon and then just put walnuts in there for her. It's so delicious. So you want me to give you the recipe? You've teased it up. Now we got to know the recipe. <laughs> You're getting me going It's here. easy. It's a really easy one to, to, to um, remember. You got a cup of butter, margarine, whichever you want to use. I use real butter. They say use unsalted butter, but I don't. I use salted for everything because I like a little more salt. I know, I'm, I know, I know. <laughs> use but the salt, it's okay. I like it a little taste. So a cup of that, three quarters cups brown sugar. I use a light brown sugar. I like that better than dark brown sugar. Either one of them will work. Three cups quarter, just regular sugar, granulated sugar. So cream that together, make it real good and creamy, and you're gonna add two eggs to that. I add my eggs one at a time just because I think it looks really pretty and it makes it frothy and, and all that good stuff. Get a little taste of vanilla extract and mix that all up. It's delicious. Then you put two and a quarter cups of flour, you use a teaspoon of baking soda, and you also use a teaspoon of salt. Mix that all together, all of that together, and you have your cookie base. So right then, you can put anything you want in it. I like semi-sweet chocolate chips because I don't like them too sweet. I'm not a milk chocolate chip girl. Classic. Semi-sweet or dark chocolate, exactly, for me. Two cups of those, the more the better, I say, the more the merrier. Keep adding them in. Uh, and then you, you bake them for about 10 minutes on a 375 oven. Um, watch them after about four or five minutes, take them out, sprinkle that sea salt on the top of them, put them back in, let them finish cooking. And when you take them out, I tell you, honey, I got a man off these cookies, okay? You know they're good. Ladies, single ladies, make these cookies for your next date. I know we're social distancing right now, but when this is lifted, make these cookies for your next mate, honey. Now, what about the entertainment industry? Yeah. What has it been like being a part of that, going through all of this? Oh, honey, we're all mixed up. We're all flipped around. Uh, you know, it's been turned on its head like everything else. It really has. I mean, movies aren't opening. Concerts are canceled. Um, you know, TV shows are not in production. We're doing our show from home like you guys are doing your show. We're doing Entertainment Tonight every night from our homes, um, which in some ways, I think there has been a bit of a silver lining there because um, we're hearing from our viewers. They connect a little bit better from us when we are just sitting in our living rooms or in our kitchen or in our bedrooms as well, just like them and talking to them. 
Um, so that's been a good thing. Our show looks a little different because we do all of our interviews on Zoom like you and I are doing right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I do miss seeing, um, you know, some of my favorite celebrities sitting in front of them and talking to them. I miss that. But getting to, to just kind of interact this way, it, it's different, um, but it's fun, you know, it's and we're finding new creative ways to do our show. I think it's giving us a little jolt of creativity. You know, on our show, we've had to figure out ways to still bring people the show that they love. It is a little worrisome, I think, because a lot of the networks, you know, stop their productions halfway through or at the end of uh, production for their um, for for their shows that are on right now, but what are they going to do now for the, the fall season? I mean, they do have shows for the summer, but when we're starting up in fall, no one's in production. So what do we do and, and what are what's going to be the programming? I mean, I think these concerts at home have been really interesting. Uh, CBS, you know, did Garth and Trisha, which they're my favorite. So I loved it and I watched it both times. Classic. But yeah. is that going to be the future? You know, and, yeah. and if it's working, um, Will we see more of that even once this shutdown is lifted? I think they're all really interesting questions. The business side of Hollywood right now is very interesting about what the future will look like. I think we will see a very different Hollywood going forward. Throw us a random ingredient that you want to challenge people to use at home. Ooh, ooh, a ran mm, let me think of a good one. Let's see. Well, Texas likes heat. So we're gonna go in an other direction, not like a jalapeno or a habanero heat. Let's do a goju jang. So oh. use a little goju jang. How about that? A little something crazy. Yeah, so y'all yeah. go get your goju jang, okay? How about that? <laughs> Try it out, make something with it. But when can people catch you on Entertainment Tonight? Um, how, do they, how do they watch? Well, check your local listings um, for what city you're in. On San Antonio, of course, we we love you guys on KSAT, and we are we're there with you every night. One of our favorite affiliates all over the country, so you'll find us there. We been here for 39 years we're going into our 40th season this fall and we're so happy so excited to still be here with all of you guys every single night thank you so much for joining us and we have, have a lot me back when we can be when i can come in the studio if you're doing texas eats uh, still once we're this is lifted have us in we'll cook together that would be so fun i'm Absolutely. gonna hold you up to it and you better bring the goju jane uh, and baby i got you <laughs> <laughs> I've got you. Well, have a sin. We'll, we'll come cook. We'll have a little fun. We'll talk a little celebrity and cook a little something up. Love it. Thank you okay. so much. Now, resuming in with Food Network host and host of the hit show Cheap Eats on the Cooking Channel, Austin resident Ali Khan. How's it going, Ali? Well, you know, it's pandemic, but we're making the most of it. Then. There's a lot of weird things happening um, all across, but a lot of cool things that are happening are things happening in the kitchen. People are reinventing recipes that they've had, or, you know, they're manipulating something that they're buying from these big box grocery stores, and that's what you're doing, and you're gonna show us a really cool hack today. This is a little brisket pho hack. So pho, also known as Vietnamese pho, if you like to mispronounce it. This is from Costco. So that's what this is, but except it's pho. This is super simple. It's got the dried rice noodles. All you do is add water. There's seasoning packets in here. You can cook it in the microwave or you can add hot water. Since my microwave is down low, I'm gonna show you how to do it with some hot water that I got here on the And that stove. sounds kind of like the more authentic, I know it's, it's, you know, it's out of a package, but like the boiling water sounds like the authentic way, doesn't it? Like you kind of <laughs> Yes, I think so. I'm, I'm going, old school with my instant pho. But then the hat, which is coming your way, is I'm going to add real deal Texas brisket. This is like college, David. This is instant <laughs> life here. I was going to say, I'm getting flashbacks right now. This is... <laughs> We're getting flashbacks, minus the pandemic. So I got my noodles in here. Got the soup base. Just sprinkling that on here. And then there's this stuff, this flavoring agent this oil. This seems like stuff the, you know, the space shuttle, the astronauts would eat. Measure out about a cup and a quarter, according to the directions here. The smells, the fragrances on here. I mean, I feel like I'm at the Vietnamese restaurant. And let's be honest, in this kind of time, this is what we have to do. Check this out. This is a sight everybody in Texas knows. A dripping butcher paper. Oh, oh yeah, good. that's the good stuff. The beauty of this is that when you put it in the pho, in the soup, it gets hydrated. 
and the meat breaks up a little bit. So, you know, you're taking this very like cheap, instant bus suit, and then you're giving it a little brisket. I mean, like this is what restaurant empires in Austin are built on. You know what I mean? Just yeah. put a little brisket in it. What have you found to be the biggest hurdle so far during the quarantine? How has this affected you? But I'll tell you, with the history of food and cooking, great recipes and great techniques have come out of adversity. It's true. I love salami. I love charcuterie prosciutto. That was an act of preserving meat before refrigeration. How does one eat when you can't have access to a food source year round? You ready to make this? Let's do it, man. I'm excited. Okay, so the water has been resting inside of your of your little cup there, right? With the, with the soup. Oh, it's falling apart. Hold that up. Big old yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the good right? stuff. Right? And we're just going to put that right in the soup. And then the cool thing is it sits. And as it sits, it'll, you can break it up as you eat it. Oh, this is so good. God, I wish you were here. I really <laughs> wish you were here. It's this thing, because it's, it's so stupid simple. Like the fact that I'm coming out here and going, here's some hot water. Here's like a packet of food. And it, it's good. I swear to you, it's, it's it's darn solid on its own. You think about how simple it is. It's from Costco, so you know it's a good deal. But I'll tell you, you had this press, good? Boy. <laughs> a good life, boy. That's oh just falling apart. This just makes sense, you know? You possibly found the best hack, like using Costco items. I'm, I'm sure that this is where it's at. Oh, Dude, look at that. I know, right? All right, here it comes. What we've all been waiting for. Mm. I, Talk to me. It's just every time I have it, this is the third time I've had it, I marvel at how good it is. I am marveled that, you know what I need to do? I need to like get the plans going for a restaurant because this is straight up genius. Thank you for sharing this recipe, Ollie. Now, before we go, please share an ingredient item that you are going to challenge viewers at home to try and use during quarantine. Any item whatsoever, what's one that you think that they should try to use? You find the jar in your fridge that's this full, that's been around. Not something you just bought, but you find the jar in your fridge that's kind of been sitting and figure out a way to use it. So I took one of these peppers, cut it up real nice and thin, and threw it on my sandwich with turkey, Copa, arugula, I'm a mayo guy. It was, it was a damn good sandwich. That's right. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. So grab a jar out of your refrigerator that you've had for a while that maybe has been collecting some dust in the back of the fridge and make something with it. I like that one. The, the rando jar, my man, because it had to yesterday. There you go. Thank you so much for joining us here on Texas Eats. Of course, you can follow Ali Khan, Ali Khan Eats on social media. Check out his website for all the links to go there and check out his blogs as well. Thank you so much for your time. Stay safe. Make sure the family's doing good. You guys have fun up there in Austin, Texas, and keep making that crazy brisket pho. I want to go try that now. You got to try it. Promise me. Promise me. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share it on, on my social media, and I'll tag you in it, because I want to do that. I want to see what that tastes like. Coming up later in the show, we're going inside the kitchen with actor and San Antonio native Nicholas Gonzalez. And next... KSAT 12 anchor Ursula Perry shares a New Orleans recipe packed with flavor. Don't go anywhere. Texas Eat Zoom Edition will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Joining us now from inside of her kitchen is KSAT 12 anchor Ursula Perry, and she's gonna be sharing a delicious Louisiana recipe with us that you can make at home. Thank you so much for having us over there. You look like you're, you're chopping up a storm over there. Well, that's kind of the trick to, to cake and cooking is you've got to have uh, onion, bell pepper, uh, oftentimes celery, garlic, all of that. If you go to New Orleans on Monday uh, into any restaurant, they're going to have red beans and rice on the menu. And what I make is a Cajun version. This is a, actually a, a jalapeno sausage. And um, I've used this before. And if you look at it, it's got, it's got pieces of green jalapenos. You want an onion, a bell pepper, a rib of celery. You want a lot of garlic, like maybe four or five cloves of garlic. Um, and you want three bay leaves, a pinch of sage, a teaspoon of basil. If you have fresh parsley for the end, that's good too. A little, half a teaspoon of thyme. And then this is like the cheap kind of the easiest way to do Cajun food. Uh, Ursula, you're like Louisiana royalty. You're, you've got the Tony Satry in your blood. Let me tell you, <laughs> normally red beans and rice would take you uh, five, six, seven hours to get the, the beans really tender and you would have to even soak the beans overnight. If this cuts to the chase. We can have red beans and rice in about 30 minutes. Technology is crazy because now you can condense yeah. this whole process and you get all the flavors that you would have got if you would have boiled it all down and, and reduced it and done it the old school way, but you can get it in 25, 30 minutes. Throw it all in and uh, and you cover it just enough to cover the beans with uh, like say a chicken broth, or you can use water. I think chicken broth adds a little something, something to the to the broth. And then you take a scoop of that, that bean out and you mash it in a bowl and then you put it back in the pot. Top it off with some, some, some green onions and some fresh parsley if you have it or dry, and you're done. Now, of course, if you want to get Ursula Perry's red beans and rice recipe, you can head to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. And I know you got a few more minutes on there, but with TV magic, we're going to see the end result here. Oh. And look at that deliciousness right there. Oh, hold it closer to the camera for us there. Let me see. I'm going to try to grab some. To... <laughs> My son here. There you He's go. LSU appropriately, his LSU shirt. Represent. Representing just a little, little, little bite for you, just like he was a baby. It's a little <laughs> hot, right? No, I just don't know why you fit. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, though? Give us a thumbs up there. How is it good? taking? It's really good. You want one? Nice. You want? Oh, okay. All, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ursula, it looks absolutely delicious. Your son, obviously, he's, he's used to the good food. He's taking it away. I want you to share with us your insight into an ingredient that you challenge people to use at home. One thing that, that I, I love to cook with and I don't see enough of is eggplant. And um, I make an eggplant orzo salad, a pasta salad, Ooh. that people rave about. It's also really good to fry it and put it on pizza. That's the pizza I make, and I put jalapenos and banana peppers on it. I call it Diablo. Okay, you know what? There's gonna be so much more of Ursula Perry here on Texas Eats, because now I gotta see this eggplant parm pizza. But Ursula, thank you so much for sharing your red beans and rice recipe. And like I said earlier, to get this recipe, go to ksat.com slash Texas Eats. You find it right there, click on the link. You can watch the video here, and you can follow along while you're making it at home. You gotta get that instant pot though. That's a big trick. And you gotta get some of that, that chop chop mix. <laughs> yeah, super, super cheap to make, super easy to make, and the kids love it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy, okay? And we'll see you on the news. Me too. Bon <laughs> Coming up later in the show, we're going inside the kitchen with actor and San Antonio native Nicholas Gonzalez. And next, we check in with San Antonio chef and Food Network competitor Jason Dady. And now, Here's a list of restaurants around you offering delivery and to go.
seen him on national things like the Food Network, all over the place. He's doing great things here in the city as well. Chef Jason Dady. Chef, how's it going? Good, good, good. Holding strong, holding strong. We ran into you just a, a week or two ago, and it was unintentional, but you were doing something extremely positive for the community. I just want to touch on that real quick before we get into the interview. Can you tell us a little bit about what you were doing here in San Antonio? You know, real quick, right out of the gate, we kind of wanted to make sure that we were here for all the hospitality workers uh, in the industry here in San Antonio, whether that is a, a, a busser or a server, a bartender, a housekeeper, a maintenance worker at a hotel. So we've been providing a hot meal every day, um, except Sundays. The day that I ran into you just had my happenstance. I was dropping off uh, meal kits to uh, Sangria on the Berg at Chef Caesar Zapata. So just kind of trying to make sure that these folks that are in our industry know that we're here for them and that um, we just we just want to bond together and stick together. Is there any item in particular that you think people could utilize at their pantries here in their homes a little bit differently during this time? You know, curry to me is like this very loose translation word, whether that's Thai curry or Indian curry or Caribbean curry. You know, to me, it's like if you have an onion, a bell pepper, a can of tomatoes and one can of coconut milk, the world is your oyster as far as being able to cook something amazing. You know, have fun with it because at the end of the day, um, if you make something that maybe isn't the best tasting thing you've ever made in your life, you know, who cares? You know, you, you tried, <laughs> yeah. you, you went for it, you swung for the fences. So what have you noticed has been a, a really big hurdle? Uh, I think the biggest hurdle is just hurrying everybody that we're taking every single precaution that we can. There's like the ability on what you can get and when you can get it. So there's certainly days where we can't get heavy cream. We can't get asparagus. We can't get mixed grains. But then two days later you go and there's 50 cases of it. We're just trying to roll with the punches and do our absolute best to provide a service for our customers and our clients. What's one thing that you've made in your home since this whole thing you normally wouldn't make, but because of the circumstances, it's something that you've created. I did 19 nights in a row cooking at home of 19 minute meals. So I have 19 dishes to choose from here. But I think my favorite meal was probably uh, the stir fried ramen dish that we did. I always just say a little onion, a little garlic and a bell pepper can make um, food really, really delicious. And I did this little stir fried ramen dish that was just good and simple and delicious. And it had a little soy sauce um, and a little ginger. It wasn't rocket science, but it just happened to be really delicious and tasty. And it took like, you know, six minutes to make. So, I mean, nice. you can't beat that. Now, can people find any of these recipes that you made, like on your social media, on your website, yeah. anything like that? They can go to my Facebook page, um, which would show them all 19 of the 19 minute videos. You can follow along on Instagram. We try to put it out there. One last thing. I want you to pick an item that you would like to challenge people yeah. at home to use. Easy. Any item. If they could find it in a grocery store, just to pick it up and easy. try to cook with it. It's easy. I always My go-to would be fennel. The fennel bulb is um, so versatile. Um, it's the core of so much of what we do as far as like kind of Italian-based cooking. Uh, it can be sweet, it can be savory, it can be braised, it can be raw. Uh, challenge yourself to buy a bulb of fennel for three or four bucks. Um, there's so much you can do with it and uh, it has such a great flavor and texture. I think you really love it. All right, you got to go for the fennel. Chef yep. Jason Dady, thank you so much for your time. Good right. luck to you, sir. Keep doing what you're doing. Be safe and, you know, go out there and keep doing what you're doing, man. You're just a positive figure in the community out here. Love what you're doing, man. Coming up later in the show, we're going inside the kitchen with actor and San Antonio native Nicholas Gonzalez. And next, San Antonio Chocolatier and Food Network judge shows us how to make spring cookies with minimal ingredients. And now... Here's a list of restaurants around you offering delivery and to go.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now it's time to check in with the San Antonio chef who's been on the Food Network. He's been all over the place. He's been a judge. He's been a competitor. He's won things. It's insane that we have him here in the Alamo City. Joining us now is pastry chef Nacho Aguirre. How's it going, Nacho? He's going pretty good, David. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we're here. We're baking. We're happy. So it's a good thing, right? Now, yeah, you are going to be sharing is. with us a recipe today that uses really simple ingredients and it doesn't even involve too much time, really, right? You have, and you're going to, you have them all right in front of you, all the ingredients. Yeah, so it's pretty easy. The, the fun part about this recipe, David, is that everybody can do it at home, just regular ingredients. And it's a fun project for kids because there are uh, cookie flowers that you can do at home and then at least have a, a little sense of spring at home with little cookie flowers. So I hope you all like it. What's the first thing you do? How do you get started? Okay, so it's pretty easy. You will see the, the ingredients uh, on the video, but it's uh, just, uh, we put the butter and the sugar on our mixer, and then we bring that out. Uh, and when you're cooking that out, you make sure that just everything is incorporated. You don't want to mix it too much because then you're going to get your butter pretty hot. Remember when bakers refer to butter, it's unsalted room temperature butter. Don't use salted butter because then most of the recipes for cookies call for salt. And if you use salted butter, then it's going to be too salty. You add your egg yolks and you add your lime juice. I'm using lime. But remember, on the juice, you can use any kind of juice that you have at, at, at home. It can be orange, it can be vanilla, vanilla extract. It can be a little bit of uh, brandy or amaretto or whatever liquid that you have over there. Don't complicate it too much. And then once everything is incorporated, slowly add your flour to your dough. So then it becomes a bowl. And here the fun part begins, okay? So whatever dough that you have, you gotta divide it into thirds. And then with food coloring that you have at home, just color them different colors. That's the trick then, right? To get the different flowers, different leaves, stuff like that. That's exactly. fun. Exactly. <laughs> and then you just, you just grab a pinch of the dough once it, it has color. Okay, so just put one in the center and then six little balls around it. And then bacon in a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes. Now, you have all these ideas, you have all these baking secrets and things like that. You, you're a master of chocolate. And that's because You've had this, you've been doing this for a long time, but you also have a chocolate shop here in San Antonio. Yes, so we're here at the Lee Chocolate here over at the north side. We're taking curbside orders to our online curbside ordering uh, store. So if you want, or if you're looking for something sweet, just head over to our website. Uh, before we have to zoom out of here, you have been on the Food Network recently and you know you were a judge for the the girl scout cookie competition that was on there uh briefly talk to us about that experience and having somebody from san antonio being in the competition yeah it's crazy i never imagined so first i went in as a com uh, as a competitor i've been very fortunate to be invited by food network to judge i'm beyond thrilled beyond grateful for this opportunity and i hope that i can be back the Food Network again. <laughs> Nacho, you rock. Thank you so much for sharing this recipe with us here on Texas Eats. And of course, to get this recipe, head to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. Look at those are out of the oven right there. Oh, yes. They came out of the oven and they come like this. So it's a pretty fun project to have with the kids. Coming up later in the show, we're going inside the kitchen with actor and San Antonio native Nicholas Gonzalez. And next, we check in with our sister station, KPRC in Houston, Texas, to chat with Houston Live hosts, Derek Shore and Courtney Zavala. And now, here's a list of restaurants around you offering delivery and to go.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Joining me now from Houston, Texas, from KPRC, our sister station there, is Derek Shore and Courtney Zavala, the hosts of Houston Life. How y'all doing? Hi. Hey, David. Great Hi, to David. see you. Thank you so much for having us today. Thanks for joining me. I know you guys are both busy. You're doing your show in a completely different way, right? Because of this whole quarantine deal. It's definitely challenging. I've been doing this now at home, David. I think, Derek, we figured out a, a month, I guess, a month. or just a little shy. Um, and every day has been something different. So from the gear to the lighting to figuring out where the home studio is going to be. With all these changes happening, what has it been like there in the food scene in Houston. People here are struggling, just like I know they are over in San Antonio. And they've gotten creative, serving up you know new ways to reach customers, of course, like the no contact takeout scenarios. We've been trying to, at least a few times a week, do the whole takeout thing. And Courtney, I know you've been doing the same thing as well. It's also nice after spending all day at home and cooking so many meals at home, it's nice to take a break from the home cooking. I think that the game changer for a lot of these restaurants really was when Governor Abbott sort of lifted the alcohol sale <laughs> issue. I know that sounds yeah. a little... Yeah, you know, but it, it did. It sort of gave everybody a little bit more of a boost to get creative. I feel like a few months down the road, we're going to look back and life will be back to quote normal, whatever that is. And we're going to look back on this time and say, oh my gosh, we had all this time at home. And instead of enjoying every single moment, we were complaining about being bored and not being creatively stimulated, whatever. Well, now's the chance to actually do all those projects. We've always said, one day when I have time, I'm going to do that project. So. We're trying to at least check things, check the boxes off the list of things that we probably never would have gotten to. But I have to say, missing my friends and family, that's probably the hardest thing, that we can't get together for a game night or we can't jump on a plane and go see my mom. I will tell you, this really hit home for me today because my youngest son, Andrew, he's in third grade and he had a writing assignment and he was writing to the future. And I went and read his letter afterwards because we had to upload it and send it to the teacher and do all these things, which Eric knows I'm not techie. So the fact that I was able to do that today, I feel like I'm hashtag winning. So um, the way that he conveyed the fact that I'm not going to school, I'm not seeing my friends, I miss seeing my friends, I only get to see my family, which is not a bad thing, but you know, it was looking at it through his eyes. And I forget on a daily basis that, you know, besides the schoolwork and everything that needs to be done, and my husband and I are rushing and trying to do the show and do all this stuff here, is that I have two little boys that aren't on a playground. Uh, can't see their friends, can't communicate with their friends face-to-face, uh, -face, can't see their teachers that they love. How can people watch that uh, here in San Antonio? Watch your show. We are on the NBC station here in Houston and our website, HoustonLife.tv, there's a link every day when we go live at 1 p.m. And typically every, every day is a combination of things. It could be cooking, a cocktail segment maybe, maybe a parenting segment or fashion. So we do a little bit of everything. Real quick, I challenge both of you right now to find an ingredient in your head, just think of something, and challenge viewers at home to use it in their kitchens. It could be anything. Oh, okay, this is easy for me. I'm gonna say beets. <gasps> Courtney, you I was literally going to say the exact same thing. Oh, oh when you, you say that, beat you to it? I, I swear <laughs> on my nieces, I was going to say beets and specifically golden beets because the oh first time God. I had golden beets blew my mind. They're yeah. golden, but they taste exactly the same. And then you don't have, you know what beets do to your, well, we'll yeah. leave that for you. <laughs> That's a whole nother conversation. Some things just change colors. We'll we'll let you figure that yeah. out. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. David. Cheers, David. Great David. to see Thanks. you. Y'all have a great one. Thank you so much. Next on Texas Eats, we're going inside the kitchen with actor and San Antonio native Nicholas Gonzalez to cook up a tasty lamb chop recipe. And now, here's a list of restaurants around you offering delivery and to go.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Joining me now from inside of his kitchen is actor Nicholas Gonzalez. How's it going? It's fantastic. Nice sunny day up here in Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> it's very unusual. Over here in San Antonio, it's been a little gloomy, it's been a little rainy, but it's today, it was, it was actually cold today, which is crazy. But for everybody staying inside, finding new ways to reinvent stuff inside the kitchen, you have a great recipe using an untraditional item that people really don't use a lot, right? Well, sometimes lamb is, is seen, a lot of people will say it's gamey or it's something they're usually not uh, familiar with, or maybe they had that one piece of lamb a long time ago that just wasn't cooked right, so they're off that meat and they don't want to mess with it. But lamb, I found, can be such an incredible, uh, not only just ground lamb that you can use for spaghetti sauces, you know, meat sauces that give it a nice little, little twist, but um, just good old traditional lamb chops, which is what I'm going to make for you today. Uh, my wife was not a fan of lamb only that same sort of thing. And now this is our favorite meal to kind of have with each other. And uh, we'll cook them up uh, probably about three days a week, right, babe? That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of lamb in this house, so we thought we'd share that. I've already uh, taken the liberty to sprinkle a little bit of um, olive oil on them, not too much. Don't want to like get them too wet with just a little bit to help hold some of the seasoning. And also when we're about to put it on a really, really hot ca cast iron pan on the, on the stove. But um, I'm really a traditionalist when it comes to seasoning. You can do it so many different ways. I mean, gosh, if you're in San Antonio, the spices you can get there to do, like barbecue rubs, are out of this world. Go find some of your craft rubs and do that. Um, I do a little bit of Himalayan sea salt, the pink salt. Nice. Um, some garlic powder and black pepper. So we have everything here, a little seasoned, um, but you can kind of see, not too heavy. It's all kind of soaked a little bit with the oil. And uh, there's always gonna be a little bit of a fat strip on the back of these chops, these lolly, lollipop chops, a lot of people like to call them. And that fat strip is where we're gonna place them down on the fire first and get a nice really kind of chicharron kind of finish on that in the oil a little bit. <laughs> Grandma used to do. Yeah, just bringing it back, man, just bringing it back. I think like everyone, it's some tough trying times. You know, it's, it's really, uh, we're going through some difficult things as a nation and this family is no different, so. You know, it's, it's balancing a lot of that, but at the same time, um, we love our time together, so. And then we go. A little, oh. little crispy, little chicharroni, oil dripping off. And I do this to the eye, but I love to, my wife loves a little bit of a, not a char, but a little crisp on the, you know, sear on uh, either side. So I'll do a pretty high heat and keep an eye on it, but it usually comes out to about a minute and a half on each side. If you could wrap up your experience with the good doctor and a, and a pretty little bow, little we'll nutshell, how like what was that like, and what are you going to do going forward? Um, you know, the, the good doctor experience for me was a, a huge gift, not just for me, but for my family. The, the, just this whole ride, being a part of a show that has touched people as deeply as it has, has has been just um, an incredible gift for us. As for me. Um, there's projects I'm interested in. There's, there's some pet projects, actually, some that you're going to hear about um, that are going to hopefully take place in San Antonio. There's a film that we're trying to produce right now. Can't talk too much about it, though. So, um, it does involve gold. Time to turn over your lamp out if you're going to <laughs> turn over your But you'll see nice, crispy oh, exterior there. Okay? And that's the one side. We turn them over. Hopefully, both sides are going to look like that. These are cooking fast. Nicholas, thank you so much for spending time with us, taking a moment out of out of your your time at your house with your family and talking with us here on Texas Eats and sharing. Your, your lamb chops look delicious. I'm super jealous that I don't get to try them, but I will be making those at home using that style, that, rep that recipe and that preparation for them. Look at you. Oh, man. There we are. <laughs> that looks delicious. <laughs> thank you so much for everything. waiting for you, buddy. Oh, cheers. Let me just, I'll just grab it going through. Just there you go. <laughs> Not only our medical professionals who we need to thank and everybody on the front lines of grocery stores, but support staff, janitors, maid staff, everybody out there, and farm workers who are providing all the food that we we're able to cook today. They need PPE just in more than most most people. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Salud.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode where we got to zoom into the kitchens of chefs and celebrities from all across San Antonio, the country, and even all the way up in Canada where they were sharing recipes using really simple ingredients that you can make at home. Plus, some of them shared ingredients that they challenged you to use inside of your own kitchen. And to get that list, just head to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats and follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats to get clips from other parts of other shows, plus this show. And I wanna use this moment right now to give a big shout out to our first responders and all of our frontline workers, our grocery store workers, anybody on the front lines right now dealing and combating this pandemic and helping us thrive in this community right now. We need you and we couldn't do this without you. Now, next Saturday, you can watch Texas Eats at 7 p.m. and that's right before the Flambeau Parade from last year re-airs on KSAT 12. So you can join us for a Fiesta Flambeau packed episode. Plus, you know, you can watch Texas Eats 10 a.m. every Saturday on KSAT 12, because this is how Texas eats. Mm -hmm.